Well, guys, this is a, a video that I didn't exactly plan to make. Um, all I'm doing is changing the carb gasket set in a, uh, a concrete cutoff saw. But there are people out there who seem to think uh, that just because it's got a specific brand means that that's exactly what it is, and they're the ones that manufactured it. And uh, I'm going to explain uh, how that's not always the case here. So what I've got, uh, pretty simple. I'll show you the top cover to this thing. It says, it's a Wacker, but it's got the Wacker brand on it, but it is not a Wacker. It actually is a, um, a Domar. Yeah, it's, it's technically a chainsaw that has a uh, V-belt pulley on it and has, you know, everything. It's got the oil tank, it's got bar adjuster, it's got, does not have the oil tank, does not, I mean, the oil pump does, uh, does not have the uh, plumbing for the uh, alder to work but it could very easily be swapped over to pull a bar and chain. So I'll spin you around to the bench and we'll take a look at this thing. All right, as you can see here, this is the cutoff saw all torn apart. And what we've got is we've got the chain adjuster. We have the oil hole here with a groove. There's no plumbing, there's no oil pump back here. And then we turn this thing around. This, this thing's even got failing sights. So the best I can come up with is this is like a 123 Dolmar. But I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild the carburetor, put new gaskets in it. I've already cleaned the carburetor out i just been waiting on a gasket kit to get here. But it, it, that is what it is. So you can't always make assumptions. I'll get you spun around here and we'll start putting this carburetor together. All right, so we're actually gonna start with the pump side first. And what we're gonna do is just get the um, <clears throat> the rubber gas, I mean the gasket part, we're gonna get it laid around here where it's laid out right, like this. We're gonna lay it on top of the rest of the uh, carburetor, the um, I'm a loss for words. But you understand what I'm talking about. Just gonna lay it on here. And then we're gonna get the, uh, the rubber part out. Lay it on here. We get it ever worked around here to where it goes. Like this. Yep. Like that. We'll take, we'll transfer it over. Always, always remember that the part with the flap goes towards the carburetor body itself and the gasket goes on the cover. Just always remember that. If you put it together backwards, it probably will not run. got a line uh does have alignment pins and i'll show you the alignment pins see it does have alignment pins one there and one there and it has corresponding holes on the carburetor here and here so when you lay everything together everything will line up just like that <clears throat> we'll take the screws put the screws back in
And this is also one of those single jet carburetors. Let me angle you down a little bit. So it doesn't actually have a high and a low screw. It just has one screw. It's like a screwdriver and just tighten the screws up. I work opposite corners. just to try to make sure that cover goes down as even as possible. Then we're just tightening on the screws a little more. <clears throat> you don't want to tighten to the point that you strip them out. I've yet to ever do that, but it is possible to do it. And the next we'll go to the uh, metering side. And I do have a new needle and a new meter and lever but i'm not going to uh i'm not going to swap them out just yet because i've always had trouble with those so what we're going to do now is coming in and right in here you can see it's got a little notch and on this it's got a little little groove right around the end of that that you need to get lined up with that notch if not you'll push down on this when you tighten everything up and uh, it will overfuel most definitely overfuel so you come in and you hook this under just like that. And I gotta do it again so I get the, uh, the pins to align. The alignment pins, just like that right there. And then you take the gasket and go on top of the gasket. Like that. And like that. And once again, we're gonna work opposite corners. And I'm gonna have to find this other screw. It's probably fell off in the floor. Which is generally my luck. I've been waiting for about a week for this kit to come in. But now I understand why it takes so long to get parts, but that's just, I guess, the nature of the beast now. So we'll tighten up. Those three for right now, and then I will uh, get back with you when I find the uh, other one. All right, just like always, everything you drop always or seems to me ends up the floor up underneath the sun where you can't get to it. But I finally did find the, find the little booger. So, now we're just going to tighten this up. But be very mindful not to strip the threads or strip the heads of the screws, even if you ever think you might have to uh, take this thing back apart again. Yeah, the most important part is not stripping the heads of the screws. It makes things so much easier later on. Ain't no reason making things harder for yourself than what it has to be. All right, so we'll get you moved up here so you can see into the car box and uh, show putting this thing back in. And I hope your view is pretty good this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here. 
on the intake block itself. I'm gonna come in here and just take my knife and cut out all this old gasket. I mean, this thing was new back in 1988 and it's probably never had a gasket set put in the carburetor, which doesn't necessarily make it wrong. But it doesn't necessarily make it right either. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of maintenance and a little bit of maintenance go a long way. Just make sure there's nothing in the impulse hole up there. Make sure everything inside is clean, pulled out. So the last thing you want is something to get down into the cylinder. And now we're ready to install the carb. So, We'll get the old air horn out here. Go ahead and get it pre-rigged up with the bolts. And just because we got the extra gasket, we'll go ahead and put another gasket in, in between the The, um, well, we'll just put the extra gasket in there just to uh, keep the dust and everything from being sucked into the carburetor as bad. So now we've got that far. Get this other gasket here. We'll take and put it in. And then next is we're going to actually hook up the throttle. And this one went into the top hole. Carb sets in kind of, kind of sideways. So now what we'll do is we'll tighten the screws up. into the carb block. I have no idea if this thing will even fire, but we're gonna try it anyway. I always do. Just gonna give it a, another half a turn just to make sure that all the gaskets are seated. We're gonna give this one about a half a turn. No, it's not gonna make a half a turn. That's all it's gonna make. <clears throat> Don't wanna be stripping nothing out. Then we'll get the choke hooked up, which choke on this is just a cotter pin. We'll get its cotter pin straightened out, stick it through the hole where the choke is, or the lever on the outside of the carb is. We'll stick the cotter pin through and we'll just bend it over. Not sure if this is exactly the way this thing was put together back when it was new but it's still gonna work. So just gonna line everything up. I'm gonna take my screwdriver and push this cotter pin. And then I'm gonna get my little screwdriver out, the one I use to adjust carburetors with. I'll take it, come in, and just bend the, the cotter pin. That way it keeps it from popping back out. So we'll pull that. Choke works. It kind of turns on and off. 
next step is to hook a fuel line back up and by the way this is a really nice fuel line we'll take the spark uh well we can't put the spark plug on until the top cover goes on and we'll go ahead and put it back on just like that Get the other couple of screws and put them back in. I mean, if it's not a 123 Dolmar, tell me what it is. I'm still kind of curious, but the best of what I could find in a picture looked like a uh, 123 Dolmar. So we'll get this dude all tightened down. Reinstall the spark plug. And I remember now why I had the socket sitting down. I needed to take the spark plug out. Well, that's not it either. Well, let me uh, shut the video off and I'll get back with you when I find the right socket. All right, I've got it back on now. So next, if we're gonna put this part of the uh, air horn, which is about the only difference between this and a uh, chainsaw, but you could probably uh, use this on a chainsaw. It's it's a it's, it's neat setup. And I do have the, uh, oh, I have part, I have part of the uh, air cleaner. I don't have the air filter. The guy says he still got it somewhere. So I don't have it. But it looks something like this after it's all assembled. So I'm going to finish up some of this plastics on here. Well, not plastics, because there's nothing really plastic on this. Uh, I'm going to put the guard back on the muffler up around it put that one cute little screw right here it's almost a, a chore to get to Clean the screw head out. That way maybe I can get my Allen key in a little better. We're gonna try this again. I 
I've got that one started now. Next step is put the other two in. Oh boy, that one's gonna be fun. No, it comes in from this side. That, that's a little better. That's a little better. I can handle that a little better. Mm, 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 mm. I just laid down my Allen key and I can't find it. Just it. Yeah, that's it. No, I didn't. I left it in the other. Uh... So this is the second Allen key. We'll tighten this dude up. And we're going to run this without uh, any of the uh, worry of uh, putting the cutoff wheel on. Yeah, see, I left the other one sitting right here. Now I'll come in from this side. And just go ahead and finish squeaking this bolt down. Maybe. But you can clearly see right here where the oil, where the oil tank is, right here. We may pop that out just to, just to show you. But it's a rubber plug that's screwed in. Well, that's just pushed in. But there's the threads for the oil tank for the chainsaw version. So we'll just push this plug back in. Uh oh. All right, well, I got it out for you guys and struggling to get it back in there. All right, I got it back in there now. <clears throat> so in theory, this thing should start. Check the gas, see how much gas is in it. If there's gas in it. It looks like it's got more oil than it's got gas. Which will be fine. That'll, that'll let us uh, at least start it up, let it run reach, reach on oil for just a little while. So we'll probably do about half a tank in it. I mean, I don't know if you can see well enough to see see the felling sites in this. Okay, yeah, you can. So yeah, it actually is a chainsaw, but Wacker uh, contracted uh, Domar into building the engine, the power head for this, painting it yellow because uh, Domar version been red. So. What we're gonna do now is see if the thing will uh, will fire. I give it a little drink out of my um, super rich oil can here that I need to clean up.
We'll just shoot it right down into the carburetor. And then we'll step back to see if it fires over. Uh, let me move you back and see if I can get you where you see this. I might need to bring you down just a little bit more. All right. Guys, what do you get for that? It actually started and run. It done pretty good. I had to give it a little help and, uh, well, I didn't have to. I just refused to pull one over enough to uh, make that thing uh, pump fuel. It's just easier to put, uh, put a little, uh, little mix down through the uh, carburetor and get it primed up like that and let it run on its own and pump fuel than it is to sit and pull and pull and pull and pull. But uh, I appreciate you watching. And if you don't care, leave a thumbs up, like. Um, but uh, I guess before I get off here, I'll go ahead and spin this thing around and put the, uh, the belt and the uh, cutoff wheel on it. Hope you can see fairly well. That muffler is just a wee bit warm. Be nice if that thing actually said Dolmar, wouldn't it? That's what I had the socket set out for. I had it out for the uh, the bar nuts. That's what it was for. It wasn't for the spark plug. Not trying to kill it or nothing, just give it a little, little tightening, because it probably won't ever be took off. Unless the belt goes bad, or that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the only reason why it would ever have to come off. But there she is in her full glory. Thank you for watching.